In structural drawings and construction site discussions, the term normal beam usually refers to a rectangular beam. It's a straightforward and time-tested option, easy to construct, simple to reinforce, and reliable for most applications. But as construction needs changed, with longer spans, material efficiency and cost optimization becoming more important, engineers started using more efficient alternatives. One such innovation is the T-beam, a structural shape that makes better use of existing materials, especially in floor systems and bridge decks. Let's break down the differences between rectangular beams and T-beams, focusing on their cross-section, load-bearing capacity and structural behavior under bending and shear. Understanding rectangular and T-beams based on cross-section and their load behavior. A rectangular beam is exactly what it sounds like, a beam with a uniform rectangular cross-section. It's commonly used in residential buildings and low-rise structures because it is easy to form with to cast and simple to design. However, in this step, the beam and the slab act independently. The slab coming over the beam doesn't help in resistant bending. Therefore, the beam alone carries the entire load coming over it. In contrast, a T-beam is formed when the slab and beam are cast together monolithically, meaning they are poured as one unit. This creates a T-shaped cross-section where the flange is the slab, the top horizontal part, and the web is the vertical stem of the beam. This structural integration transforms how the beam behaves under load. In a T-beam, the slab contributes to resisting compression, while the web handles tension and shear. This shared action between the slab and the beam leads to better load distribution, high flexural strength especially for floor systems, multi-story buildings, and bridge decks. Now, let's talk about flexural strength and the neutral axis. To understand why T-beams outperform rectangular beams in bending, we need to examine the concept of neutral axis, an invisible boundary in every bending beam. When a reinforced concrete beam is loaded, it bends. The top portion of the beam is under compressive stress and the bottom portion stretches, that is, it will be under tensile stress. There is an imaginary line that separates these two portions, and this line is what we call as neutral axis, where there is neither compressive stress nor tensile stress, where the stress is equal to zero. Now, here is a key point. Only the concrete above the neutral axis resists compressive stress. Below it, steel reinforcement handles the tension, as concrete is weak in tension. Ideally, the concrete below the neutral axis, that is in the tensile area, doesn't have any role in resisting tensile stress. It serves the purpose of holding the reinforcement bar in the particular beam. So, in a rectangular beam, the compression zone is limited to the narrow top portion of the beam, restricting its moment resisting capacity. But in a T-beam, the entire flange area lies above the neutral axis, that is in the zone where compression is more. This adds a significant amount of concrete to the compression zone, as shown. So this improves the bending strength without increasing the depth of the beam. Having understood this, let's discuss clearly why T-beams are stronger in flexure. Number one, increased moment of inertia. The flange in a T-beam is both wide and positioned far from neutral axis. While calculating moment of inertia I for this particular cross-section, it is found to be greater than the rectangular beams. Moment of inertia is a key property that determines how well a beam resists bending. So higher the moment of inertia, better flexural performance. Number two, larger compression zone. In rectangular beam, only the narrow portion, top band, resists compression. But in a T-beam, the slab, that is a flange portion, participates in resisting compressive forces. So this helps to spread the stress across a larger area, reducing the strain and making the beam more efficient under the load. 3. Better load distribution. The wider flange in a T-beam distributes load more evenly. This is especially helpful for uniform light loads like people, furniture or equipment on slabs. The next difference is concerned with shear strength. While T-beams are superior in bending, they require more attention while we design for shear. 
in a rectangular beam, the entire width helps resist shear. It has a uniform cross-section, which makes the shear resistance straightforward. But in a T-beam, only the web, that is the vertical stem, resists shear. The flange does not contribute to shear strength. So this often means you need to add extra stirrups or shear reinforcement near to the support. So while T-beams wing and flexure, they may need additional detailing for safe shear performance. Ease of construction and practical site considerations. When it comes to execution on site, a rectangular beam are simple in construction. They have a straightforward formwork, easy reinforcement and quick to cast. And therefore, it is ideal for residential buildings, small projects or where the speed and budget are key factors. But T-beams require more coordination. It must be cast monolithically with a slab. It involves complex formwork and reinforcement alignment, needs careful curing to ensure strong slab beam bonding. It is best suited for commercial structures, institutional buildings and bridges where longer span and efficiency are priorities. Moving more in detail about the design simplicity and the structural detailing, rectangular beams are easier to design using manual methods. Their behavior is well established and most design checks are relatively simple. But in case of T-beams, we require more detailed analysis. It includes effective flange width based on span and spacing, the position of the neutral axis, the risk of flange cracking under flexural stress. While design software makes this easier today, engineers must still understand the underlying theory, especially in academic design, code checks and real-world applications. Material economy, saving concrete and steel. T-beams are often more economical in large projects, particularly when floor slabs and beams are repetitive. Here is how. The slab acts as the flange, so you don't need a deeper beam. Less concrete is needed to resist the same bending moment. Shallower beam depth reduces the overall building height in multi-story buildings. However, in small-scale projects, T-beams can become uneconomical due to complicated shuttering, higher labor and supervision cost, increased reinforcement detailing time. So, the economic advantage depends on the project size and the complexity. T-beams provide a more integrated and efficient structural system where the slab and beam work together. They deliver higher flexural strength, better material usage, ability to span longer distance without increasing the depth. Meanwhile, rectangular beams still serve well in simple structures, residential buildings, projects where speed and simplicity matter the most. If you are designing a floor system, bridge or multi-story frame, and you want to improve the load carrying capacity, reduce concrete use and maximize the span with minimum depth, the T-beam is often the better choice. Rectangular beams still play a valuable role in basic structural system. But if your project calls for strength, efficiency and modern construction techniques, don't overlook the T-beam. In concrete design, the smarter beam isn't always a simpler one. It's the one that makes structure and material work together. If you are a student, engineer or site supervisor, understanding these differences helps you make smarter design choices on real world projects. Thanks for watching Civil Engineering Fanatics, where we break down complex concepts into practical construction wisdom.